Okay. Whoa! What's happening? This is the SNES controller to Arduino interface, very similar to the NES controller interface that I recently did. I'll link to that below. So we have the shift register clock latch data on digital inputs 2, 3, and 4, and we're taking 3.3 and ground and sending it to the 7-pin connector. The NES controller has eight buttons, so it has a single 8-bit shift register, so you have up, down, left, right, select, start, B, A, but the Super Nintendo controller has an extra X and Y button as well as the left and right trigger button. So there's four extra bits. The trigger buttons have their own little PCB with one of those carbon contact mechanisms where the button pushes down and makes contact from the trigger, which has a little pivot hinge here, and it just swings in and out and pushes the button as you need. So that's just soldered directly to the board. The cable, unlike the NES, this one isn't soldered directly, it's got a header and connector. Then you've got all of your regular buttons, and this time we have a Motorola 520B shift register. So all these buttons will come into here and get clocked out, the same as the NES, just more serial bits in the stream. I couldn't find a data sheet on this, but I did see it looks like they're being sold on AliExpress. Maybe if I look harder I can find more info, but I don't really need it. I'm just trying to clock the data out. I don't want to actually buy these parts and use them for anything. So let's put this back together and see how it works. The SNES controller behaves exactly like the NES, just with an extra four buttons. So the connector also has seven pins, and it's laid out like this with VCC, clock, latch, data, and then ground over here and the two mysterious no connects or I don't know exactly what else they may be used for. So the order they are read in is right here and I've assigned arbitrarily these numbers as bit positions in a single SNES register. As I read in the buttons I'll place them in this order by the numbers here. I'm using the same little delay here for making sure we have a setup and hold time when we are changing the control signals from low to high, high to low. I have clock, latch, and data for the shift register on digital inputs 2, 3, and 4. I configure those pins as needed and initialize everything. We'll be using this as a USB joystick, so we're going to manually send all the buttons out at once when we are ready after reading them in one by one. So just like the NES, we start by moving the latch high and then wait a bit and then move it low again to initiate latching in all the buttons and making the first button available on the data pin. So one by one we are writing to the SNES register bit position that we are currently on starting with 0 which is the B button from up here. Position 0 will end up being the B button. So whichever button we are reading from 0 through 11 which equals 12 total buttons we read in from the data line whether it's high or low and store it in that bit position of the register. Then we toggle the clock high and low to shift the next bit out of the controller and we read it into the next bit position in our button register. After we have all 12 buttons, we assign them to joystick digital buttons. And just like the NES, the USB joystick buttons have inverted logic, so we invert whether the button is on or off. If we read in a zero, it means the button was pressed but here we would turn that into a 1 because 1 means the button is pressed on the USB controllers. When we've assigned all the 12 buttons to USB joystick buttons, we send it out over the USB joystick interface, and that's the program. Now, using the HTML5Gamepad.com joystick tester, it's detected the Teensy Serial Keyboard Mouse joystick unit on USB, so I've just got 12 buttons assigned from 0 to 11, and as I press them in order, they should light up when pressed. So I should be able to press each button and get it to register. B, Y, select, start, up, down, left, right, A, X, left trigger, right trigger, and random buttons, making sure they're simultaneously recognized. 
and we're good. Back at the Raspberry Pi with the Super Nintendo controller wired up to the Arduino and plugged in via USB. Let's get this configured on Raspberry Pi. I'm using this USB SNES knockoff controller to actually be able to control the inputs to get me into the menu. So the Super Nintendo official controller with USB interface. Hold a button to configure it. D-pad up, D-pad down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y, left shoulder. So that's what they call it. Right shoulder. And there's no more buttons, so now I just hold something down to get through each of these. And now I have control of the system with this input device. So, all right. Okay, start for one player. Again, can't really focus near and far. I don't know how to play this one. Let's see what happens. Jump. Fire, left, right, up, down. Okay. Whoa! What's happening? Ah! Ah! Oh! Come on! I start out with rapid fire. Oh, spread! Oh, dead! Oh, spread! Oh! Oh! Damn it! Fail. Success.